ice on my hand. Check, check. Iced tea, vanilla ice. How now, brown cow? Hi, Chris. Hi, Amy. Congratulations. Hi. Um, before we start, I want to say that AJ just spoke to us and said he feels that there was a judge that should not have been judging. Do you know anything about that or? No, I don't know what that means. Um, okay. Well, I want to talk to you about a little bit about the drama between the two of you. Um, it's been brewing for quite some time. Can you kind of tell us how it started and where, you know, why it all started? Yeah, let me pull back there. Is this better? So uh, about like five years ago, maybe four years ago at Portland, Oregon, uh, Full Contact Fighting Federation, FCFF, uh, Kevin Keeney runs it. It's where I fought as an amateur. I actually met him. And everybody was like, oh, that's AJ, dude. You should check him out. I'm like, I didn't know who he was. I thought he was like a part of the Oregon State Athletic Commission. And I was like, hey, man, I need a water. I'm about to go fight. And he was like, I'm not getting you a, a bleep water. I'm like, dude, that's what your job. Go do it. And he's like, I'm AJ Agazarm, Mata Leone or something. And I'm like, uh, is this guy going to give me a water? Uh, and then I went out and I won my fight. And I was like 8-0 at the time as an amateur. And then I didn't see him again for a couple of years. And we did another sug. And he got beat by a another uh, Portland cat, Nate Orchard, humiliated him. And that's just kind of where it started, you know, because I, I didn't know who he was. I'm sorry. So. So it's been brewing for five years, like this kind yeah, of. Yeah, you know, do, like. Do you, would you say you hate him? Dude, hate? No way. Uh, I don't hate anybody. Um, hate is such a strong word. I'd like, I can dislike him to a fair degree. I think he is an incredibly disrespectful bully. I think he's bad for the mixed martial arts community. I think he should go back to fighting YouTubers. You know, he should go back to that, so. So, I mean, AJ just came up here and um, he, he said that he want, he's going to appeal that and he wants it to be either a loss for you or at least a draw. Do you have any, I mean, uh, talk on that? Uh, no, man, that's a sore loser right there. I got to tell you that. Um, this is my 17th fight. Should have been my 18th. You know, that last fight, uh, the one before my last fight where the guy missed weight by like 10 pounds. So it's been a long couple of years for me. I had a broken leg. You know, my wife and I are going through a lot of uh, home issues. You know, we have some, we've bought our first home and went through some crazy stuff with that. And that's personal. I won't get into it, but uh, you know, you, you put all that away, you handle your business, you go out and fight. I was willing to shake his hand, you know, after it was all said and done, but man, he is a cheater. He's a cheater in every way. I mean, he headbutted me. He did a lot of illegal strikes. Um, yeah, sure. I was slow to get off of him one round, but I mean, he, he caught a lot of free shots in there and did nothing to me. Am I damaged right now? Do I have much on my face? Mark wise, that dude is effed up. I, I molested that guy's face. And that's not the best word, but I did very naughty things to that man's face. And I'm going to do very naughty things when I get home to someone else that I'm very much acquainted with. Uh, Cause you know, it's been a while. I haven't seen my wife for like maybe three times in the last month. I'm just, I'm trying to make some little sunshines, you know, let's go to some positive stuff, man. I already fought somebody. I'm over that. I'm done. Like I'm in my hand. I hit that guy so much. My hand hurts. It's like hitting a freaking piece of metal stupid metal well, well congratulations on that and um you know you talked about not to bring down the positivity but you talked about the people in your life that have had covid you know did you feel like you were fighting for them too not this not covid cancer i don't like saying the word cancer i've had a lot of people pass from cancer in my life um and a very good friend of mine you know we had a long talk about it and you know environment plays a big factor in that and there's a lot of like naturopathic ways to, to work on it but you notice there's a there's a rise in it again and there's a lot going on in our country right now and I just hope that uh, my friends at home going through that again, my buddy Chad um, is going through that right now. I think he's on day five of chemo and I, uh, God bless. I hope he, uh, I know he will beat it. Power of words. So it's all right, man. I just want to talk to you about the, uh, the first round there, the headbutt. Um, <laughs> he said that you guys were just moving and you accidentally clunked heads, but from your perspective, was there any doubt in your mind that that was intentional? It was hundred percent. I'm pretty sure we were in the guard or mount or something, you know, and I was just totally pinned on the ground working to get out. And I just remember him going like, like a little kid, like so frustrated. He can't hit you. So all he does is headbutt. And then, I mean, that's why those are illegal. It's a game changer. I mean, if we can headbutt, let's do it. I would have headbutted him on the feet. I had to do, I had to turn my elbows. I had to do, you know, nine to nine to six elbows. I couldn't do 12 to nine. He was elbowing me illegally. He did up kicks illegally, uh, headbutt illegally. Everything he was doing was illegal. I got my mouth is all dry. I need some water, but I was the clean fighter. And obviously I won. I stuffed everything he had and I did damage to that face. I know that face was messed up. One of the other unusual sequences in that fight was after the fight when it was you 
referee Mike Beltran and AJ, and he was trying to get you guys to shake hands. And he was going to, like, can you just talk me through that and what was going through your mind? Dude, during fight's the- over. I won. Get over it. Tried to shake his hand. I mean, well, I don't know why people hate me so much, man, or love, you know. It's a fight game. Feelings get hurt. I mean, geez, it's like freaking uh, Vondelay or whatever when he attacked Chael on the freaking uh, fighter show or whatever. He was like, what? No, what? No, what? No. And it's like, dude, no, this is not, we're not playing around right now. This is not a fight. You need to calm me down. We did the fight. I won. I destroyed you. Shake my hand. I'm shaking your hand. I'm, let, I'm letting it go. You know, show, show everybody that you're the martial artist here. He's not, though. He's not a real martial artist. Yeah. Congrats on the win, Chris. Uh, did this fight play out uh, specifically the way that you thought it would? And what do you want next, man? Man, you know, I'm a little mad he got some takedowns. I thought he was going to do that single leg to the body lock. But, you know, when he grabbed me, I was like, man, this guy's weak. But I was just having so much fun. I never really, like, turned it up. Like, I was kind of, like, at a seven the whole fight. I was, like, coasting, having fun, not really, like, in danger, just, like, enjoying the moment. Like, man, I have not fought, and this has been a crazy time, and there's a lot of a-holes out there. Like, I just got to get in there, and I wanted to enjoy all 15 minutes of it. My coach, Tiki, goes and was like, take your time, play with your food, you know, and I'm like, oh, that sounds great. I'm hungry. Congrats on the win, Chris. Um, I gotta ask, uh, what's your assessment of his uh, grappling skills? Since you did get to, uh, he did get to your back. Um, and yeah. you, what what do you think about his? I mean, I got out. I reversed it every time. I mean, he had me in no threatening position once. I ended the fights. I ended every round on top. And uh, at the very end of the fight, dang man, I'm telling you, hold on. You know. Yeah. So then. Uh, I ended the fight on top and mount with like a key lock. And, you know, I remember he said, I mean, he went for heel hooks. He went for knee bars. He went for the, like the Russian knee bar from the back. He went for a rear naked choke. He went for a triangle choke. He went for everything in the book and got nothing clean. Um, Pretty, pretty good. I would say for just a brown belt. Right. I mean, that's just all I am is just this nobody brown belt. Now I've beaten him twice in SUG and, and Bellator. So. The other thing I want to know is, what were, you, were, you, were you talking trash while the fight was going on? I couldn't tell. Uh, it sounded like you were like, laughing at his Yeah, strikes. I mean, dude, he's a joker. I mean, look at that guy. Like I said in the, in the interview in the cage, like, that is one of the worst fighters I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I respect his grappling. Don't get me wrong. But that guy needs some more ring time. Or he needs to go, he's like the Dylan Dennis of the Diaz camp. Obviously, nobody good came with him you know, from that camp. And I mean, I'm not saying you want to – who wants to idolize and emulate the Diaz brothers? That dude, those dudes take more pounding than freaking uh, – uh, Jenna Jameson, you know what I'm saying? Like, geez, they take beatings. And clearly, uh, AJ did not skip a beat there. He he took the beating. I'm like, you mentioned that there were a few illegal moves. Do you feel like the referee should have done more to intervene, take points? To yeah, get- but I wouldn't shut up. That was my problem. If I would have shut up and just let it happen, I probably he probably would have got deducted. But I was like, hey, yo, what the heck? And then it's like, it's like the kid who calls, calls, you know, like <laughs> you call out somebody's cheating. Well, now they're like, you know, whatever. Yeah, he, don't do that again. You know, it's like your little brother hits you. That's what it was like. Your little brother, like cheap shotting you. And you're like, mom, he hit me. It's like, both of you cut it out. It's like, what the, I didn't do anything. So I should have just like, I should have cried. Maybe if I would have cried, I would have got a point taken off. Like he was crying at the end after a, damn, my wrist hurts, man. Hitting that guy. I have never hit somebody that many times and didn't go down. He tested that chin a lot today. I mean, that's like four. I don't think he's going to have a long career. That's my 17th, and that's like his fifth fight. I don't see him doing another five fights, to be honest with you. We'll take a couple from the uh, internet here, internet. starting with Kevin Varghese. Your line is live. <clears throat> hey, Chris, congrats on the win again. Um, you know, like you said, five years into this fight, you know, kind of fight coming to be. Uh, walk us through your emotion through fight week and getting to the cage. Uh, I didn't uh, go to college and, uh, you know, pursue this life of a mixed martial artist and academy owner and a coach, uh, you know, because I like like conforming to the societal norms. And I will say that this fight week was incredibly professional, man. They kept us so safe. But damn, I felt like a little kid. I've never been bossed around more in my life, man. It was crazy. I was like kind of getting, you know, like you just like a little too much, man, a little too much bossing around. I'm fine with I'm, I'm coachable. You tell me what to do. I'll work on it, but I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to go home. So it was a lot. So, you know, after this fight, you know, what's your future looking like? You know, what's the next step? Do you want to have a quick turnaround or do you, would you plan on taking a little time off healing up a bit before your next fight? Um, wherever it goes, I know that I'm pretty certain this was my last fight with Bellator uh, con- contractually. I have nothing but nice things to say about Bellator 
Atm atmosphere is amazing. Uh, if they want me, let's talk. I mean, I'm very happy. I'm willing to fight again, but my wife and I have had a very long, long, long last year with a lot of personal stuff. We're, we are solid. Not that that is anybody's business, but we have had a lot of uh, like financial stuff going on. Uh, we bought our first house and we got into some trouble with that, you know, just remodel. Man, remodels are crazy. Uh, you know, first year of marriage and we did a remodel. I don't know if anyone else knows what I'm talking about, but damn, son. So we're almost done there and I'd like to get that done and like live in my house for a little bit. And then I'd like to get another fight wherever it is. So. All right. Matthew Putterman, your line is live. Hey, congrats on the win, man. My, my first question is to you, what is the hardest thing during the training camp? Is it the weight cut? The dieting, is it the training? What is the hardest part of that to you? Weight cut and dieting, yeah, they're about the same. Um, they're not the worst. Everybody does that. Like, I think a lot of fighters put a lot of emphasis on making the weight and not the fight. Um, for me, it's like the weight is, a, is like a short battle. It's a battle, but the fight is the war, right? And I have to say the biggest thing that hurts in fight camp is just the camp itself. It's like this constant, you have to be in a growth mindset. You're trying to learn but in camp, you're also trying to win. So like when you're out of camp, you got to be learning more. And when you're in camp, you got to be in more competition, but then you're training with top dogs. And it, that's just hard, man. Just camp in general is a grueling, uncomfortable process, watching your calories. People just don't understand how hard fighting is. I mean, there's no other sport like it in the world. I mean, dude, if I was six foot, six foot one, oh, please, man, I would be a heavyweight. So I'd never have to watch what I eat. But all these other sports, I wish I would have done golf. I was on the golf channel when I was little. I should have just, you know, because they make bank, they can get in like 30th place and make 100K. Like, dude, <laughs> jealous. And my last question is to you, you know, what motivates you more, coming off a loss or coming off a win? Neither. Um, I have a lot of young minds at my gym, uh, academy. It's not a gym, it's an academy. And working with those kids and the parents and the families that come into my academy in Canby, Oregon and the surrounding area, that's what motivates me. Those are really freaking good, honest people and they love martial arts. And I, I have not seen anything in my life change somebody's life more than, than the martial arts period. I mean, and it helps, I mean, especially the vets, man, we got a lot of veterans in our gym, great people, you know, James, he, one of my really good friends and students there. Um, I I've seen jujitsu just have such a positive influence on them. And that's what motivates me when I go into fight, I think about all their faces and just like the positivity that we're putting out to each other, that energy. It's great. So. All right. Our last question will come from Randall Folks. Okay. There was a lot of animosity between you and AJ. Uh, obviously, it's a weight lifted off your shoulders. You got that W. How are you going to celebrate tonight? Uh, well, one of my best friends, uh, Vic, I actually just had my birthday, right? Like, like last week, and I didn't get to celebrate it. My wife, I drove 16 hours from Huntington Beach to uh, Portland to say hi to my wife on my birthday. It was the last day of camp too. So it was, it was actually perfect timing. I surprised her like nine hours early. And so she like rushed all day to make this cake and it was like a sugar free, no, no sugar added like fiber cake. It was, it was amazing, babe. It was amazing. I definitely wasn't on the toilet for six hours that day. Uh, but so my buddies bought me a red velvet cake. We're going to go back. We're going to eat that cake and, uh, and then fly home and we're all going to see our beautiful families, you know? So 